So, welcome everyone. My name is Anders Sydstedt and I will be the moderator chairman for this uh, session. And I think you all knew the drill. We had already had one, one uh, session, so you know it's totally 20 minutes and they have 15 minutes for presentation and I will show like five minutes left and two minutes left and then we will have five minutes for questions and, and we try to follow the, the timetable very um, exactly. So first presentation is Freedom in and from the West with Georgina Konstantin Parke from Liberty University of Romania. Please. Is this, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm sitting down because I was too short for that. So, um, I don't have a slide, I just have a story and I, and I think it's, it's kind of short and pretty easy to follow and I'm sure a lot of people from other countries might be able to identify with what I'm talking about today. My paper examines the ideas of freedom and progress within the non-Western societies and how the process of modernization relates to the import of concepts, practices and institutions from the Occident what I'm really trying to say is, is I'm going to be talking about Romania's struggle to modernize. Romania, a country in Eastern Europe, has gone through communism, it's gone through a lot of things, and uh, how it's tried to modernize and how it understood that in relation to the West. So the first and obvious thing I'm going to point out is how amazingly successful the West has been in providing people with just a very, very good type of lifestyle, materially speaking. And so a lot of other countries have, of course, needed and wanted to follow the same example. And Romania is no exception to that. Um, within Romanian society, there are two theories that I found interesting and that have recently recaught my eye. The first one talks about the um, forms without substance. And this is when the Romanians have imported certain things from the Occident um, that simply didn't have, they didn't have the capacity to apply the things that they've imported because they didn't have the, either the social structure for it or a foundation for it, a cultural foundation. Um, and um, the other theory is the theory of synchronism. And we're gonna get into that in a little, in a little bit. Um, so the first theory, which, which talks about the way that we were imported stuff. Um, oh, let me just find this on my phone here was originally founded by Tito Maiorescu and it was, uh, and it was brought um, to the attention of many other thinkers like Mihai Minescu. Um, and the theory revolves around the idea that Romania has imported thoughts, practices, institutions, and generally all things foreign, more specifically Western, without developing the ability to fully integrate these imports into their society. In other words, such things have been imported without the necessary cultural and social background which would help to understand and build upon them in a proper manner. And uh, the, the founder of this theory, Maiorescu, states, a form without substance does not bring any benefit, but rather brings harm because it destroys a powerful means of culture. Another thinker, Radulescu Motru, went further with the theory and examined the psychology of the Romanian people, talking about certain fundamental incompatibilities between the Romanian spirit and the Western entrepreneurial mindset, for instance. He observed that Romanians have no commercial sense and that for Romanians, time is anything but money or currency. Um, Eminescu, another thinker who talked about this concept, also expressed his thoughts, and I thought that this actually probably explains the theory a lot better than any, anything else in a short way. He said, artificially aging a child, growing plants without roots in order to have a garden ready in two hours is not progress, it is devastation. So, believing that the past is an intricate and vital part of the future, Eminescu would draw attention to the necessity of not ignoring the link through time, but rather nourishing and enhancing it so that the future might build upon the stable foundation. On the other side is the theory of synchronism. Eugen Lovinescu talked about this and he said, well, it's true, we do import certain things that we have no substance for. However, this is better than to just fall into barbarism. So, for instance, if we're talking about a country that's never had a university before and wants to build a university because it's seen it and how it works in the West or any other country, 
Um, and it doesn't know how to do that. Well, how do I manage this? How do I uh, make up the exams? How do I educate the students? What does it really mean to have a university? And this is, this is the type of thing that we're talking about. And, and Lovinescu said, well, that doesn't matter if there's no substance for that. Let's import it first, and then the substance will come with time. We'll figure out how to do this as time goes by. Um, so while he agrees with the whole premise of, of how we import things, he doesn't think that this is a bad thing. Um, let's see. Now, if we look at what has actually happened in Romania through time, I would incline to give the first theory a bit more credibility because we have imported a lot of things from the West and not all of them have been completely compatible with our society. But probably the most tragic thing that has happened is there's been a loss of trust in our institutions, from academia to politicians to a lot of other things that we've just desperately grasped onto for, for the hope of, of creating a better society. Now, a lot of this is part of, of communism's issues that, that it brought to Romania. People lost a lot of their trust in a lot of the things that the state or the private sector had to offer. Um, the, the biggest thing you could do within the communist regime is beat the system. If you beat the system, then obviously you're surviving because the system doesn't really want you to survive. It was a bad and oppressive system. Um, and so we even have a term for this, which I think speaks a lot about how things have turned out in Romania. The term is the abroad. So we don't talk about a specific country anymore. Now they're just all together bundled up. And during the communist regime, anything that came from the abroad was better. It was better quality, it was better thought out, it was just simply better. And to this day, people talk about the abroad. You'll see this even with, with uh, certain things that happen in politics today. A lot of people my age will go out and say, I want a country like they have in the abroad. But they're not really referring to any specific country because of course, if it's not Romanian, then it must be better. Um, and so these are a lot of the issues. And, that, that have happened that I think gives more credence to the first theory, which is we've imported some, some uh, forms that have no substance and we haven't been able to build a substance yet to them to be able to apply them correctly. However, uh, who knows what the future holds when it comes to that. Um, another thing is um, some people have said, well, you know, it's because of, of orthodoxy. I mean, um, the Protestants have done so well with capitalism and then they're very entrepreneurial mindset and then they know how to do these things. Well, our problem must be orthodoxy, the religion of the majority of Romanians. Um, and and I, I, I don't think that's the case. And the reason for that is the only thing that orthodoxy does is, is a manual for the salvation of the soul. It has nothing to do with economics. In fact, it frees up the person as long as the person is, is good uh, in society and follows the laws and is just fundamentally a moral person. The orthodoxy has no problem with what they want to do. In fact, it frees up the spirit to say, go ahead, learn economics, learn how to do a capitalist society, learn how to do all of these things. So I don't see why anybody would see that this is incompatible. But just because it doesn't, doesn't teach free market economics doesn't mean it doesn't allow you to, to do it for yourself. Um, and I made a parallel with this. I, I found Samuel Huntington's um, comments on what he calls a torn society to be very relevant to Romania, in fact. And I want to just quote, quote this really quick before I get to the conclusions. I don't want to take too much time. He said, political leaders imbued with the hubris to think that they can fundamentally reshape the culture of their societies are destined to fail. While they can introduce elements of Western culture, they are unable permanently to suppress or to eliminate the core elements of their indigenous culture. So basically, after this, conversely, the, the Western virus, as he called it, once it is lodged in another society, it is difficult to expunge. The virus persists, but is not fatal. The patient survives, but is never whole. Political leaders can make history, but they cannot escape history. They produce torn countries, not Western societies. They infect their country with a cultural schizophrenia, which becomes the continuing defining characteristic. And I think that right now, this is exactly where Romania is. Because there are people on, the, on one side and the other side, some are saying, let's take everything we can from the West. And the other people are saying, we, we can't do this because this is bad for us. And so in conclusion, I think that the best way for Romania to go forward is know who it is and, and, and what its culture is and understand and have individual and cultural introspection before it brings anything else into the equation. I need to know what my culture is before I know what exactly I can apply to it from another place. Just like when we translate from one language to the other, some things have no translation. 
And, and putting this into perspective, some things just might not fit with our society. But capitalism certainly isn't one of those things. I think it fits just fine. Thank you. Well, I really enjoyed your talk. And I find it very unusual because usually this is a case where of imperialism where a country invades another country and changes. But this is a case where it's self-grown, self so yes. to speak, that you, you lose your culture, and I think it's very important. We've yeah. had this case in my own country, in Canada, where the indigenous people lose their culture because their children are put in residential schools, lose their language, and, and all of their culture. Yes. And this happened until 1974, oh, wow. very recently. And I forgot what all I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say one thing on the Orthodox Church. Yes. You're, you're, I think you're right. It doesn't have anything to do with capitalism. However, there is a theory that the, <coughs> a certain type of, of, or of a Protestant, the Calvinist, had a, had a theory that the, a rich person, a wealthy person, was chosen by God to go to heaven. There, yes, and, and so a lot that, of people say that's why the, the Protestant Revolution was so successful in, in bringing right, the West okay. up. But, and so, yeah. so they would become wealthy and that would be show that they were the chosen. Absolutely. But that was not all the Protestants. That was only a certain the, sect, yes, yes, a very yes. extreme sect. Yes, absolutely. And that's something that worked for the West. But for Romanian society, we like to keep things separately. We like to, to be in church and, and pray, and then we like to go out and make our money keeping God here, not necessarily here. Actually, or in our wallet. I think there's been a lot of proof that it's not true. It might not be, I don't know. Catholics of all persuasion and Muslims and everybody has done very well. Yes. I don't think religion has anything to do yes. with yes. the ability yes. to run exactly. a free market yes. economy. I agree. Thank you. Next one. Thank you. A couple of comments. Uh, first of all, what, what you're talking about is, is the, the destruction of the moral and legal framework by communist regimes and the difficulty of rebuilding from practically bare earth. Uh, but you do need to cling on to what you've got and of course that's one of Hayek's things about the extended moral order that you need to maintain continuity as much as you can, as much as is compatible with going forward. The other thing is that having lost your moral and legal framework through the communist regimes, you now look to the West for functioning institutions, let's say a university, but in, since the fall of the wall, the Western universities have ceased to be a model that anybody would want to emulate. So you are really between a rock and a hard place. That's why we have to be careful, that was my point. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Where do you look? I mean, it's just a tragic. Yes, thank you. The Polish philosopher Legutko wrote a book which is called uh, The Demon and Democracy. And his thesis is that the post-communist uh, elites continued the modernization project of the communists under uh, a changed etiquette. Yes. Before it was communism, yeah. now it's, Euro it's Europeism. Do you agree with him? Uh. <laughs> um, to a certain degree, yes, I, I would have to say that, that there have been a lot of cases where we just changed the label on something and called it something else, even though it was the same exact thing. So yes, to a certain degree, I do. Absolutely. Excuse me. I just would like to hear a comment from you. Uh, in my perspective, Eastern countries have a different culture nowadays than uh, Western countries. Yeah. Uh, before the war and during the war, they were on the Western side. And then after the war, of course, what happened? They had to change drastically. So I believe they must feel a little bit frustrated with Western people because they didn't help them enough after and before. What do you think? I think there is a great element of, of truth in that. A lot of people do feel like they've been betrayed. It, like I said, I think Romania is a very torn country, spiritually as well as intellectually mm -hmm. at this point. I know my great-grandfather died with, with the words, America will rescue us from communism. And there was one factor, that's the Soviet Russia, was less civilized than them. 
mm. and then the Western. So they must feel quite uneasy. They do. It, it, yes, it is difficult. You choose the East, you choose the West, whatever it is that you choose, you're in danger. And, and yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Hi, so uh, thank you for your talk. I was um, just, I just wanted to pick up actually on your conclusion. Um, so you were talking about the potentially pernicious effects of imposing a particular form on a substance that's not ready for it. And then you pointed to the question of identity and everything like that. And I wonder if you might venture, you know, uh, an answer in terms of what might be some of the main constituent, you know, components of the Romanian identity that any form, whatever the Romanian people choose, would have to take into account. Yes, absolutely. I think the, the first thing that we would have to take into account is how our religion has molded into our culture. I think first and foremost, in many ways, we are orthodox, uh, at least the majority of us, whether it's cultural or religious, it, it's, it's a melange. Um, and so that's, that's the first thing we do need to take into consideration. And, and everything else, I think, just really springs from that particular identity. Um, you know, we, we know our history, we know we were conquered by the Romans a long time ago, but then after that, immediately, um, actually before that, uh, our history of Christianity starts to, to form, and, and we have the Apostle Andrew who, who legendarily came and, and brought us Christianity. And so, for us, really, that's where we are. Everything springs from that, and as long as that is taken into account and respected, I think you can do beautiful things with the country. So, I think we give it our Thank you.